Making seamless patterns with Canva could be pretty difficult, until now. In this video, you'll learn to make seamless patterns quickly and easily. This method works with any canvas size. You only need to use one document. And best of all, it's easy to modify and experiment with your art as you go forward. So let's make seamless patterns in Canva. What's up guys, it's Trent and today we're talking about seamless patterns in Canva. And this is my first video for Canva. Let me know if this is a tool you use and you wanna learn more about it. Now I've seen many techniques on how to make seamless patterns in Canva and many of them I find actually to be quite painful to tell you the truth. Uh, multiple documents, relying on specific math, splitting the canvas into quarters. And you know, I'm kind of lazy. I like things to be easy. And that's a method I'm gonna show you today. But before we get into that, I actually just wanna review a little bit. What is a seamless pattern and what makes a good seamless pattern so let's look at this question so here I have a pattern that I just kind of made quickly and you can see essentially it is seamless in the truest sense it repeats in both directions but there's kind of a problem with it and it's not what I would call a sophisticated seamless pattern what you can see here is that I can basically draw a rectangle around certain areas and nothing is really breaking this shape and like I said, this is seamless, but it's not a very complicated seamless one. So whenever you're looking at a pattern and you find some place where you can just kind of draw a square around it or some type of other rectangle, I'm not saying that's bad. There's lots of great patterns that have that style to them. And there's lots of just simple patterns that look really great like that. But a lot of times when you want these complicated patterns with multiple objects kind of intersecting each other, you don't want to be able to draw this kind of rectangle around it. Now this is the source file for that pattern I just showed you and clearly you can see why it was kind of repetitive is that nothing is really going out of this border area here. Now here I have another pattern and this is what I would call a true seamless pattern because there isn't really any area where you can draw a rectangle around it without having something break out of it. So I'll move this rectangle around there's nowhere I can place it where something isn't breaking out of it. So it's actually truly seamless. And if we look at the source file here, you can see why that is. The objects are breaking out of one side of the pattern. They're starting over on the other side. So if something goes out of the top, like this flower or this branch, it wraps around to the other side here. Same thing with left and right. Okay, so enough theory. Let's go into Canva and see how to actually do this. Here I am in Canva. And I'll click Create Design. And I'll do a custom size. Now our document can be any size we want, it doesn't matter. I'll just make it a square here. I did 3000 pixels recently, I'll do that again. And this is my document. Now I got some files ahead of time to use with this. I actually got these from Creative Fabrica. So that's a site that I also like to use in addition to Canva. They have lots of great graphics there. I'll put a link in the description so you can access that. And we have these dinosaur icons over here. I thought that'd be a cool theme. Okay, so here's the whole method for creating a seamless pattern in Canva. Now, don't blink because if you do, you'll miss it, okay? So drag your object, your graphic into your canvas and you know, kind of get it the size you want. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to drag it off of the canvas part way until it lines in the center, all right? Now hold Alt, click and drag it to the other side. And when you do this, you actually now have a seamless pattern. That's the whole process right there. Now to be careful, just what you should do is select both of these. And actually I can see it's not quite aligned. If you right click, choose align elements and then middle, that just makes sure they're aligned perfectly. Now the reason this works is because you centered both halves exactly on the edges of your canvas and one side is going to wrap around to the other side. Now here's a really cool thing I haven't seen anyone else mention, okay? And that is that if you select both these objects, if you actually move them around, it is still seamless. So they don't have to be centered on the edge of the canvas the whole time. You just have to center them there once. And then as you move them afterwards, just make sure that they're actually moved together at the same time. So you can see this here, you know, the head a little bit forward, the head here is where it stops and it wraps around over here. Now, if you wanna do the top and bottom, it works the same way. So I bring this shape in here, I'll resize it. And I'll put it in the middle there. I'll hold Alt, drag another one. I got centered there. So again, I'll just make sure they're aligned and centered again. So I'll do align and center isn't selectable. So that means they're already centered. So that, that's good. And like before I can go and I can drag them however I want. Now to do the corners, it's just as simple. We just need to do one extra step, which is we need to do all four corners at once. So let's pick a shape. I'll drag this here. Resize. Now when you do the corner, you wanna make sure that it centers horizontally and vertically. So here I can see I'm centering both ways. Hold Alt, move it over here. 
there. Let's do the bottom, bottom right, there. And now bottom left. And there we go. So that's how you handle the corners. Now, by the way, kind of a little trick if you want to hide repetitions a little bit better is you can take one of your corner shapes and maybe just put it in the middle and kind of do something with it and just kind of alter it a little bit. That way people, it's a little harder for people to actually see where your shape is repeating. So I'll just put that there. Okay, so now time for a very important step, which is testing our pattern. So I'm gonna show you two ways of testing. First, I'll show you using Canva because this is a Canva tutorial, but I'm not really a fan of testing in Canva and I'll show you why. And then I'll show you the method using PhotoP, which is free, works in a web browser and doesn't even require you to create an account. So first let's look at the Canva method. So first I'll download my file here. So I'll do click share, download, it's PNG, do transparent background and I'll click download. And I'll call it Canva Seamless. Okay, so now what you want to do is you want to add a page to your Canva document. And then you want to upload the file that you just downloaded back into Canva. So click Uploads and Upload File. And you can go to where it is. This is where I have it. And when your file uploads, what you can do now is drag it into your test page here. And kind of make it to a size where you could fit like two by two going on it. So I'll zoom in now. So now what I'll do is I'll hold Alt and I'll duplicate it and I'll move this over here to this side here and I'll snap it right to the, the edge of that other one. Then I'll do it again, Alt, drag down, snap it there and a third time there. So we can see that it roughly looks seamless but the problem with Canva is that even if it is perfectly se seamless, it's going to put in these lines and it depends on the zoom level you're at. Sometimes they're more visible than others but you can see there's these white lines. They're visible in this plant here. I can see them on this dinosaur here. I'll keep the cursor off so it doesn't start highlighting. But you can see that they're there. And you know there's other options for doing this. Some people use like the image frames and they put the, the margins to zero. I just can't look at this and really trust it because it is possible for flaws and seamless patterns to have like a very thin line on them. So I wanna find another method of testing that is actually gonna show us what it really looks like. And that's why I'm gonna show you how to do it in PhotoP. So let's look at that method now. Okay, so let's look at a better way of testing. And if you have any software that can just do a pattern fill, that will work too. But if you don't, something I like is PhotoP. And I think I'm pronouncing it right. I used to say Photopia, but it sounds like Photop is the way most people say it. It's free, it works in a web browser, and you don't even need to sign up for it. The way it works is I'm just on the home page here, and I'll click New Project. And over here, you can just choose a relevant size for your documents. So I'll just do 5,000 by 5,000, and then I'll click Create. So now what you do is go to File, Open in Place, and I'll place your seamless pattern. And I'll make it a little smaller. Now you just go to filter, other, and select repeat. And it will repeat your pattern through the whole document. So now just click okay. And now just zoom in and out and check the details and make sure it looks good. So we know our dinosaur here was split around the middle. Let's see what it looked like in Canva. Yeah, it's kind of around this point. So let's see how that looks. Looks pretty good there. What else? Our dinosaur kind of in the middle of the neck there. Yeah, looks good. Our plants looks pretty good there. I don't see any issue. So this gives me much more trust that our pattern actually worked. So this is PhotoP, it's a free app. But like I said, if you have any type of graphic design software on your computer, Affinity Designer is one I also use a lot. Uh, anything that just can fill with a pattern is a good way to test what you make in Canva. Now, like I said, one of the best things about this method is that it is so easy to modify going forward. Click an object and its twin, we can move them around and as long as we don't intersect the corner, it'll still be seamless. Same thing with the dinosaur here. But of course we can add more elements to our design. Um, I'll add something, I don't know, a fireball, it's kind of cool. Maybe I'll add a volcano too, um, some leaves. So I modified things a little bit, let's test it again. I'll go back in here and I'll upload it. File, open in place, our version two. Let's do the filter, other, repeat, and still looks good. So you can see it was really easy to modify once we get those basic shapes aligned and testing it again, just downloaded it, re-uploaded it, and here it is. So as a little bit of a bonus tip, I'll just go into Printify here and show you how you could put your pattern on a product. I know this is something people like to do with a lot of their repeating patterns. So I'll search for blankets here. And I've always liked this velveteen minky blanket from Pick the Gift, so let's click on it. 
and I'll just click start designing. So what I can do here is I can select all the product sizes. So we have 40 by 30, 60 by 50 and 80 by 60. So I'll click update and I'll click my device to just upload our pattern. So here's the last one we tested. I'll click open. And what happens is you can go here and there's a create pattern button and this will just repeat your pattern over the product. So if I click this, now we can see that it's repeating over and over again. And there's a widget here where you can click and resize it to you know, make it the, the appropriate size you would like. Now, one thing that's a pet peeve of mine is like Canva, this interface here also kind of shows these seam lines. You can kind of see it here. I'm not sure if it shows up on your video, but I can see it here on my screen. The good news is if I click preview, we actually get our previews of what the blanket would actually look like here. So it seems like it actually is good. I don't see any of the lines in the preview part here. And there are different kind of lifestyle mockups. You get the 40 by 30 on the bed. I'll open this in an image. Let's see what one of the bigger ones looks like, the 80 by 60. So this gives you kind of a, an idea of what it would look like. And I'll go to edit again. Now, one thing you notice here is it tells you what the DPI is, and it bases this off of the biggest object you have. So actually it says 132 DPI. This is for the 80 by 60. It kind of shows you the worst case scenario because the bigger it is, the lower your DPI is going to be. It would be nice if we could make this 150. And the way we can do that is if you go to 80 by 60 here, click make specific design for 80 by 60. And then the way we increase the DPI is we can actually make our image here a little bit smaller. So maybe we want it to be 150. I'll just do that. So now this one is 150 DPI. What's 60 by 50? It's 156, it's fine. I mean, if we want to change it, we could, we could make it different. But I know a lot of people struggle with these DPI issues. So your options are basically export from Canva as high as you can. And then what you're gonna need to do is if you have a repeating pattern, it's easy to increase the DPI just by making the pattern smaller. And you can do that individually for each design. So again, let's do 60 by 50 just to give you an extreme case. If I click make specific design, I mean, I could make this crazy small, right? So then if I go to preview, 60 by 50 looks like this and 80 by 60 looks like this. So you can see the difference. Now, obviously that's not a great design. So let's make it back to our normal size. So that's just have an overview of Printify and specifically the make pattern option, which I think is pretty good. You can also stagger the patterns and that kind of thing. But for our seamless patterns, you just want to make sure it's the grid here. If you want me to make more videos on Printify, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely be sure to get some out there. So that's how I make seamless patterns in Canva quickly and easily. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. And also let me know if you want more Canva content. Until next time, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.